Trump and Joe Biden has been noticeably non-traditional. I spoke with a Princeton political scientist, her name is Dr. Lauren Wright, about how the transition historically looks. Uh, Melania's recently released video address and what the duties of the first ever second gentleman will look like. We'll listen to this conversation here on News Now from Fox. You're watching News Now from Fox. I'm Daytona Everett. I'm joined now by Dr. Lauren Wright. She is a political scientist at Princeton. She's been with us before. Uh, Dr. Wright, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me back. So let's focus in a little bit on the transition of first ladies. Uh, Last time we spoke, we said, hey, it's going to be looking a little bit different this year. Uh, Melania Trump just released a video message. What are your thoughts of that and this new age of releasing these farewell messages on social media? So it's very difficult to talk about the first lady's transition without talking about the obvious uh, gap that we've seen in the president's transition this year, because such an important tradition that typically happens before inauguration is the incoming administration is really welcomed by with open arms by the outgoing one and particularly the first ladies and first families make that happen and it sends a very important message of unity to the public and it's very relatable and we don't have any of that this year Um, and it's it is a cost to the country because if you think about the very large percentage of americans who still believe the election was stolen even though it wasn't Um, about one in five americans are okay with Uh, what happened in the attacks on Capitol Hill on the 6th. So this is an extremely divided country. You would hope in that situation that we would focus especially on unity and especially on peaceful transition of power. But as much as we want that, it's just very hard to do with a president who had such an active role in what happened on January 6th. You know, for people who don't know, what does that transition traditionally look like from one first lady to the next? Sure. So there's a range. Um, Some first ladies don't have very close relationships and some have already been in the White House very often. So obviously in modern history, Laura Bush was familiar, fairly so, with the White House and the East Wing from her mother-in-law's time in office. And luckily, Uh, Jill Biden this time is very familiar with the inner workings of the White House from working very closely with uh, Michelle Obama as second lady. That doesn't mean, however, that it's not nice to have a tour of the White House, um, to talk to the incoming administration about some challenges or logistics. But again, I think it's just almost impossible to expect that after such a contentious few months since the election. And so, you know, even though Melania Trump attempted uh, a unifying, uh, peaceful message in her farewell video, that really does not strike a fitting tone with a lot of Americans who are angry and sad and in fact scared about security risks. And so in a typical year, I would tell you, Um, that the first lady is part and parcel of a process that helps us uh, support the peaceful transition of power. It's a big part of public messaging and relatability. But in this year, it's very tough to expect the East Wing to carry that communications weight when such disturbing things are still happening in the West Wing. Mm -hmm. Also highlighted in that video message, though, uh, was Melania touting some of the the things that she has accomplished during her time as First Lady, one of those being uh, Be Best, uh, her group uh, helping out kids and everything. What is Jill Biden going to be doing stepping into this new role? So what she said publicly, at least, is that she will work on education as a core issue. And we remember her DNC speech was in an empty classroom. 
that's something she has personal experience with and a lot of knowledge of, especially helping community colleges get more resources and encouraging students to go to community college. And then she also has mental health projects. She has a military families initiative that she actually started with Michelle Obama when she was second lady. And so she's indicated she will continue those things. And uh, what you normally expect for a first lady's project, if you will, is for it to connect closely to the president's policy agenda. That's when these projects work best is when they're in fact frames for sometimes very controversial policy initiatives that need more public support. Uh, and it's something first ladies are comfortable with, they have experience with, and they have to be passionate about them. So, you know, rather than just something that's a box to check or, or fluff, these projects that first ladies take on tend to be extremely important tools for the White House to communicate its policy message to the public. Hmm. I mean, like we said before, she's had this second lady role. She's now going to be first lady. How different are those? What are the differences? That's a great question. I don't think I've been asked that before. It, it's similar and different in a couple of ways. The second lady is not quite as publicly active. They're not quite as well known or popular as the first lady. And so they don't have typically this full suite of tools available to them to fully push the White House's agenda. First ladies have more of those, but uh, they can act uh, in, a, in a very supportive fashion to the first lady and the president and their, their highly valued surrogates, both on the campaign trail and in the White House. So I guess more of a force mul multiplier um, you know, an extra person to deploy who the public is very interested in. Uh, but many of the core functions, in fact, mirror what the East Wing is doing. And so Jill Biden, having, having worked closely with the Obama administration, specifically Michelle Obama in that regard, will absolutely be helpful here. Yeah. And for the first time ever, we're going to have a second gentleman. What right. does that role entail? <laughs> I actually think this is very important because, you know, people who study gender like me and other social scientists have been wondering exactly how much of these first and second spouse roles are gendered responsibilities. And Doug Emhoff, by really taking on with open arms his role as second spouse, second gentleman it has now been the institutionalized title. Uh, I think that's very important because we will have eventually uh, a first gentleman. It might even be him for all we know in four years. Uh, and so setting the standard for a male spouse to be equally active, to have his own projects and to support uh, his spouse, who is the primary, the office holder, in this case, the vice president, Kamala Harris, uh, is, is a really important uh, point in history. And so he is the first, he will be active. He's taking the role very seriously. He has a chief of staff who's very experienced and that will set things on a positive track. What is he going to be uh, moving forward with? What are his focuses? So he's, a from what I've seen, a little broader and maybe he'll, uh, he will um, home in more on this as, uh, as we get into the first 100 days. Uh, but he has said he's very interested in justice, uh, reforms. He obviously is a very accomplished um, entertainment lawyer, I believe is his practice, um, and he'll be teaching at Georgetown. So again, it's, it's not so different from a female spouse. He'll do something where his skill set and his professional background can support his project, but it also has to be something that uh, he's very interested in and can spend a lot of time on. You know, he's not the only one who wants to continue teaching. Jill has said that she wants to continue teaching. Um, sure, critics are saying, can you do that and also uh, be first lady? So critics have always said either the first lady is too active or not active enough. And, you know, the median opinion, if you will, uh, tends to be that it's such a tremendous platform 
And there's such an, an opportunity to improve people's lives that Americans have wanted an active, transparent, responsive first lady. And to accomplish that, you have to have a very professionalized, organized office with quite a few staffers. And so until the Trump administration, we've seen those staffs become uh, more specialized. You know, Michelle Obama had staff that had special skill sets, either in education or healthcare policy. Uh, Laura Bush had one director of policy and projects, but it was taken very seriously. And so all of that to say that if Dr. Biden wants to be a very active spouse, which I assume she will be, uh, she will need a very serious team and she will need to take the role seriously, which I have no doubt she will. And she will have to delegate some of the social responsibilities, some of the other responsibilities to staff that she has to help her walk both of those tight ropes, if you will, and do both jobs. But it, it is uh, a, a, a precedent being sent for uh, future spouses and, uh, again, a historic first, as you mentioned. Yeah, right. So looking into the inauguration ceremonies, we're going to be seeing Michelle Obama. We're going to be seeing Laura Bush. Uh, do you think these women will somewhat act as uh, the type of transition that Melania Trump was supposed to be originally? That's an interesting question. Laura Bush and Michelle Obama are very popular. And when I study first ladies and I tell people about my results, one of the continuous results is First ladies tend to be more popular than their husbands and more popular than the vice president. And that's why they shoulder so much of the public messaging burden that the White House has. So I think in that fashion, the public uh, wants to see former first ladies. And moreover, the fact that Laura Bush and Michelle Obama have a, a very um, good working relationship and have respect for one another uh, and they're from two different parties, highlights the unity that we are starved for in this country, frankly, right now. And so maybe that will be uh, a very important image uh, for those former first uh, families. And Bill and Hillary Clinton are included in that, too. Yeah. And, um, you know, Michelle Obama obviously has already worked with Jill Biden in the past. So a sense of comfort as well for her to be stepping back into the White House. Yes, definitely. And, um, you know, I think we'll see a continuation in some ways of her legacy as second lady, uh, but also some very important new first steps that will, again, expand the options for future presidential spouses and change the way that we see the role. Mm. Anything that you're going to be looking for uh, throughout Inauguration Day? Well, I, like all com political communication scholars, I'll be fascinated with the speech um, obviously, as we've heard, as reporting has indicated, uh, Joe Biden will focus heavily on unifying the country, but that's a very difficult task. And it's an extra high bar this year because we've had such a tumultuous last couple of months. Um, how do you do that again when so much of the country is scared um, and feels fairly hopeless and you're coming into office not only with tremendous partisan divides, but an economic crisis and a pandemic. That is the task that he has to accomplish. And he must hit on all of these notes in a way that resonates with as many people as possible. It's a, it's a big job. Yeah, huge job. Well, uh, Dr. Lauren Wright here, a uh, political scientist with Princeton and an expert in the transition of power between first ladies. We appreciate you being with us on News Now from Fox. Thank you. It'll be definitely interesting to see the